welcome back to Pub Classics 3. Thanks to all the people on Instagram who sent me through their favourite pub meals. Uh, what we come in, it was salt and pepper squid, and um, so obviously a lot of seafood lovers out there. We've also got prawn cutlets, and someone also put in for beer battered fish. A lot of steak dishes, so we might have to do a um, Pub Classics 4 at some stage. So I'm going to actually do a fisherman's basket this time around so we can cover those couple of dishes and you can pick and choose whether you want to just do them individually or actually make the whole basket up for the family. That is up to you. Um, so I'm going to get into it. Before I do, I just want to congratulate all the, um, the pubs and clubs that are finally getting to open. Um, I'll be visiting you shortly uh, to come and have some of your great meals as well. So always support your local uh, businesses. So anyway, let's get in. I'm going to start on the salt and pepper squid and we'll get started. Beauty. All right, so we've got the squid tubes. We're gonna do the salt and pepper squid now. I'll show you how to cut the squid correctly uh, as a pineapple cut. You can actually cut it in a um, in the rings like calamari. Um, I'll show you this way. It actually breaks down the actual tissue of the of the squid and also makes it a lot more tender and also the flavors will get into the actual, the slices that I'm going to show you. Uh, it's really just a basic flour, rice flour, flour, and your peppercorns, crushed peppercorns through the actual dusting and then we'll fry it off. Okay, let's go in. I'll show you how to do this. Okay, with the squid, what you want to do, you actually want to cut it so it actually, this is a pineapple cut, uh, an Asian style. So I just want to take the, both ends off. They're quite tough and rubbery and, and sinewy, so you don't want those. We're just going to put those over there in the bin. You then just want to run your knife, a sharp knife, through the hood and just separate it like that. Just check there's no spine in the squid there and remove that because if you cook it, you won't be able to eat it. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut that squid hood in half and we're actually going to cut the soft section. Uh, you're not going to cut the outside section because we want that to actually shrink, curl around and that'll cause your pineapple cut and your squid to, to uh, wrap around itself. So all you do, you have your knife on an angle diagonally and you're just running the knife along like so just cutting through the squid hood, okay? You're not cutting all the way through, you're just actually carefully cutting through and leaving a little bit at the end. And then what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to now cut it on a, at the opposite angle and using the knife, I'm just running it forward and you can see that's starting to cause the little tips or the points, uh, which they call the pineapple cut. And this works really well because all the flavours get caught up in there. It also shrinks around when it's cooked and it looks fantastic on the dish as well. All right, we're then going to cut that down the centre. And depending on the size of your squid hood, you can either cut it in thirds or you can cut it uh, in quarters. Okay, it depends how you want it to curl. All right, so just marinate the, the squid. You've already cut that as a pineapple cut. If you're worried about the pineapple cut, just um, cut it into rings, that is fine. So we're just gonna marinate this for about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. You can put some ginger in there if you want, that is up to you. Just roll the peppercorns around in the pan. It's on a medium heat. You can see it's starting to toast off. You can see that smoke coming out. You don't want them too long. Uh, just to start here, them crackling. Just gonna put that into the mortar and pestle now. Okay, you can hear that um, and see the smoke coming up in those. And you can them crackling okay beautiful that's what we're after uh, cracked black pepper goes in there as well uh, your white pepper as well okay so quite a lot of pepper is in there but we have a lot of uh, flour to mix that through so don't be too scared off if you don't have a mortar and pestle just use a spice blender or just a, a food processor to just to blitz it up so you can see just there that's what we're after don't crush it too much it's a nice powder and this is now going to be incorporated with the, the two flours. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to throw that into the bowl now. 40 grams of rice flour is going in. We've got the 80 grams of plain flour. If you want to use cornstarch instead, that's fine. The plain flour just makes it a little bit crispier and crunchier. Okay, so that's going to go through. And we just mix that around. The spices are all in there. And now we're going to cook that off with the squid uh, by putting the squid through egg white and then into here. 
After you've separated your eggs because you're using the egg whites for your salt and pepper squid, keep the egg yolks because we actually use those, mix it with some milk for the prawn cutlets so you're not wasting it. So we'll add some milk to that and we'll crumb the prawn cutlets. So we're going to do the prawn cutlets now. So the biggest trick is actually just butterflying the prawn. So I'll take that uh, quite slow, I'll show you how to do that up close. And then all it is, is just a crumbing set, crumbing mix. So we've got our two egg yolks, we've got a cup of milk, a uh, bit of salt and pepper, we're going to put that in the flour. And we have about a cup and a half of flour here and then the panko crumbs. So that's your crumbing set. So I'm just going to go through, show you how to um, butterfly these prawns, flatten them out carefully, and then we just crumb them up and ready to go for your seafood basket. Arr, me prawn cutlets. First thing we need to do, we've got these really nice king prawns here. The larger the prawn, it easier is to butterfly it, and also you'll get a larger cutlet out of it when you crumb it. Um, so the smaller prawns, just think about that. I know they cost a little bit cheaper, but it is very difficult to actually devein it and remove uh, the poo poo shoot. Take the head off. You want to leave the tail on, obviously, because we want that as, uh, as a garnish, but also it'll be sticking out a little bit of colour, and you can then hold your little prawn cutlets. So we're just basically doing that, remove it right up until the, the tail section, do all of your prawns, and I'm gonna show you how to now butterfly these. All right, so we're just gonna go through, remove the ends of these, of the prawns, okay, just to get them nice and neat. So the best way to do it is have your knife fairly flat, your prawn is flat on the board, and you're just basically coming through and rolling your knife around the actual shape of the prawn. Make sure you scrape this out, remove this, you don't want that in there. And then the idea is just keep going until you start to actually butterfly that prawn. And it should sit up like that. Okay, we're gonna flatten this out carefully, but not too much, shortly with a little bit of glad wrap. But it's really quite simple. You're just coming through, de-vein it. We're now going to just get a little bit of glad wrap. We're gonna actually flatten these down individually. Okay, very carefully as well, because you don't want to ruin that nice flesh. But there, you can see um, all the prawns have been uh, deveined. Flatten them out on the board. Do maybe three at a time if you can. And just be really careful. We're going to pull the glad wrap over, back side of the mallet, and flatten it. And so just flatten them out. We're just going to grab the seasoned flour. Um, just be really gentle with this. And when you do dust them in the flour, keep the the tail out. Right, get rid of the excess flour. I'm going to place those over on a tray here and then we'll put them through the pancake crumbs. Alright, so we've floured the prawns in the Caesar flour. I'm just going to now put this in the egg wash, uh, just like so. Keep the tail out. I don't want any crumbs on the tail. We want to see that a nice red colour when it cooks off. And we just flatten it into the panko crumbs. And we're going to actually double crumb these, so we're going to put them back through the egg wash and the panko crumbs after I've done all of these prawns. Okay, so we're going to double crumb these now, and that's just what the name suggests. We're just going to go back through the egg wash, egg mix, remember keep the tail out, and then we just back into the panko crumbs, remember the ones you've done. This will just make a really nice coating and keep all those nice juices into the, the prawn cutter when you fry this off. Pepper squid already, that's marinating, so we've made the flour up for that, seasoned flour, so that really just has to go through cooked in the fryer. We've also got the prawn cutlets, double crumb, they're ready to go. Next big thing is I want to get the beer batter on, so it can actually ferment and uh, get some air through it. And it's fairly basic, it's a simple step, it's just uh, 375 mils of beer, a uh, cup and a half. I use the self-raising flour because it's got the baking powder in there, it'll give it a little bit more lift and a lighter batter. One egg, salt and pepper, and I've got the swordfish here that we're going to put through and cook that uh, later on, ready to go. So let's get into it. Just make sure you always sieve your flowers. Okay, make sure you get in and give it a good sieve. You need to get as much air incorporated into that batter as you can. Fortunately, I'm using a, a high yeast beer as well. So we're gonna now make a well in the center. And the idea of the well is to basically put your wet ingredients in the center and then you slowly bring it from the inside out and the dry ingredients will fall down and make less lumps through the batter. If for some reason you have an absolute train wreck, just um, put it through a sieve once you've made the batter, just to remove those lumps. There's nothing worse than having uh, a battered fish or some battered product. And you take a bite and there's still dried flour in there and that's because of the lumps. All right, so I'm just gonna pour the beer into the center. And we're going to whisk that up with the salt and pepper. Okay. All 
Let's reel this baby in. Okay, so I've just thought we need two sauces. I'm gonna make up a quick uh, dill and caper mayonnaise uh, and also a just traditional cocktail sauce to go with the prawn cutlets and all of that. Um, I'm also going to put a honey mustard dressing to go with your salt and pepper squid, but I'll actually put that on the end of this, um, this video just to show you uh, that recipe. It's a great recipe to go with salt and pepper by itself. All right, really quickly, just I'll do the cocktail sauce. I've got about three tablespoons of mayonnaise. Make sure you go whole egg mayonnaise. I'm going to go a little bit of a squishy of tomato sauce, a bit of Tabasco, a couple of drops. I'll put about six, seven drops in there. Uh, Worcestershire sauce, go about half a tablespoon. Okay, I always put a little bit of um, sour cream, so go tablespoon and a half of sour cream. Squeeze a lemon, I've got one of these lemon wedges. Also salt and pepper. So just mix that around. Really easy cocktail sauce. You can put some dill through it if you want. I'm gonna get a whisk and just whisk that. So we'll just make a really quick caper mayonnaise. Um, I'm just gonna get some capers. So it's kind of a tartare base without the gherkins. So we're just gonna run through. Roughly cut these capers. Have about two tablespoons of mayonnaise there, whole egg once again. You can make your own mayonnaise, and generally I would, but this is a quick one just to finish off. Boys are starving. Uh, and then just some dill. Sea salt, cracked white pepper, and a little squeeze of lemon juice. Okay. Beautiful, nice and easy. to get Kai onto this now that he's turned up and he's going to uh, make some chips. You can't have a fisherman's basket without chips. So this is a beauty little gadget. You can do it by hand. Obviously cut your um, your potatoes into chip size. This is like a little a chip maker that pushes the potatoes through and then you've got your chips. I'm going to get him to do that because he said he wants chips. We're going to make these chips, okay? So you ready? These you can get from Aldi. I've seen them there. That's where we bought this one from. Little chip maker. So let's go. Yeah, there's your chippies, mate. Hey, this is Potato Head wouldn't be too happy about that one. All right, so a big slow and steady effort, but we're actually gonna now just put these into the microwave, cook them for about three to four minutes, um, just so they're steamy. You don't wanna boil them because they'll get really sticky, and then um, we're gonna then deep fry them. What do you reckon, chipmunk? cooking the swordfish, the beer battered fish. So you want to cook the larger items first. You don't want to cook your scallops in the salt and pepper squid because they'll dry out. So we've got seasoned flour. Uh, we've got the beer batter here and the uh, deep fry is on about 180. If you don't have a deep fry, don't worry. Just use a pot with some oil and just check when you put the batter in there. If it turns black, then it's too hot. All right, so we're just going to dust these in. This has just got salt and pepper, white pepper through there. I don't want the black pepper. Just dust it off. Now, a little trick when you're doing beer batter is always get rid of the flour. And then when you're dipping it through, just into the batter, and then come on in. You just gently drop it into the actual fryer and move it around a bit, just so the batter starts to set. Okay, so I've just, these are starting to rise to the surface. I've got a nice colour in there, so I'm actually going to pop them onto a, a paper towel just to drain them. And I'll keep them in the oven warm while I start to cook the prawns, the scallops, and the squid, which takes next to no time. Okay. Alright, so there's a beer battered swordfish. I've cooked it. It's going to go in the oven, keep it warm at about 50, 60 degrees in the oven. I'm going to start cooking the rest of the stuff in the oven. Right, egg whites here, we're just breaking it down. I'm gonna now put the squid in there. We're gonna put it through the spicy uh, pepper flour mix. So let's get started. So the squid's in the seasoned flour. Make sure you, when you put it in the deep fry, just do it individually, um, otherwise they will stick together. So they're in the egg whites. We're now gonna just put them through this deep fryer really quickly. Okay, these should curl up really nicely. Okay, so that's about three or four minutes in there with the salt and pepper squid. So we're just gonna pop them on there. They've curled up nicely. I'm just gonna cook the remainder now. 
going to make the tempura batter now. Uh, the, everything else is done other than the crumb prawn cutlets. So we're just going to now just um, add the egg. So egg's going there. This is the um, corn flour flour mix. I'm actually going to add some crushed ice. You can put ice in if you want it. It's just the colder the batter, the better. It will actually go really crispy. I've got some soda water here. I just did it on the soda stream. So we're just going to add this slowly, three quarters of a cup roughly, but don't be too worried about any lumps. Okay, so we're just gonna bring that in. You don't wanna work it too hard, we don't wanna beat this um, so it actually gets too uh, smooth. We actually want some lumps through it. So, okay, so we'll just mix this carefully, fold it through, and we're going to now add our scallops into this tempura mix. All right, so we're going to put these scallops through some little bit of seasoned flour, through the tempura, and then serve it up. If you don't want to cook the scallops too long, you just want them just firm and set, especially with the tempura mix. Alright, there's the tempura scallops, just going to pop them on here. Okay. All right, last bit, but not least, we're gonna do the crumb cutlets. Okay, uh, Meg Finnegan, this one's for you. So we're just gonna cook those off and then we're gonna serve up with the fries. Okay, deep fry temperature is perfect. Still on about 170, 180. We're gonna now deep fry these prawn cutlets really quickly. You can see there's no crumbs on the, the actual tail ends. So we're just gonna cook these off. And I'll do the fries just beforehand. All right, so we're just gonna brown these off. Don't cook them too long because they will dry out. So you can see those, the tails have really started to curl and that's why I have actually haven't covered it. Okay, there's the last two. You can see they curl up nicely, really nice colour on the tails. No crumbs there, that's what we're after. All right, it's getting late, so I need to now do the chips for the boys. So I'm going to cook those off now. They've been in the microwave for about three minutes. We just pat dry them with a paper towel so they're not wet. And then we're going to actually now cook them off and serve up the fisherman's basket. So there's the chips ready to go. Just going to chuck them in here, salt them up. Coming a bit closer, Jet. Always sea salt, so. We're now going to serve this with the rest of the fisherman's basket. So there's the chips, the fries that Kai did. Kai's fries. All right, all right, all right. All right, so the family's hungry for this. It's taken a while, but um, not the most healthiest meal, but we've kind of covered the um, salt and pepper squid, the tempura scallops, we've got the beer battered swordfish and the crumb cutlets, prawn cutlets, fresh lemon, cocktail sauce, and the caper dill mayonnaise and the fresh chips that Kai made. So, hope you enjoy it. Let me know how you go. Give me some um, feedback on these recipes and good luck. Crumb corn, 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 corn cutlet. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually butterfly these king prawns now. Okay, I don't know if you've heard, they don't have many friends in the ocean because they're quite shellfish. I just split my pants. Peppers here, salt and peppers here. Salt and pepper squid. So let's get started. Salt and No, that was perfect. Let's start it. Subscribe to the channel and keep cooking up this wonderful storm.